Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Monica Oktora, PhD student in clinical pharmacy and pharmacology, University of Groningen. Today, I will share one of our research about the scoping review of the prescribing in type 2 diabetes patients. Uh, but before uh, I'll, I show you this picture uh, that may represent about the deprescribing. So deprescribing is a plain process uh, of uh, reducing or stopping the medication that should be under the supervision of the healthcare professional. And the, this deprescribing aims to improve patient outcomes. And ideally, the prescribing, the prescribing process should be involved um, not only healthcare provider, the pharmacist or the uh, doctor, the prescriber, the prescribers, but also the patient side. So how the patient will uh, react towards the deprescribing, how the barriers and all, also the enablers, the attitudes that can uh, uh, support the deprescribing process. Okay. Mm, next. I will share our graphical abstract. Uh, not this one. I'll try another one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this one. Okay, so the title of our study is Rates, Determinants and Success of Implementing the Prescribing in People with Type 2 Diabetes. So the study is a scoping review from uh, that we retrieve uh, several results from the studies that includes uh, the results about the rates and then the determinants and also the success. But before I jump to the uh, results, uh, there are some reasons uh, why a uh, diabetes patient may be in need in the, the, this deprescribing process. As we know that uh, the deprescribing can emerge because of the uh, case of adverse, uh, adverse drug reaction from the patients of, because of the polypharmacy or potentially inappropriate medication. Diabetes patients usually receive uh, many medications to treat uh, their condition or they have uh, some comorbidities like hypertension, hyperlipidemia, also uh, cardiovascular disease. So this patient, the type 2 diabetes patient usually get uh, often receive intensive treatment of uh, glucose lowering medication, uh, blood lowering medication or uh, the lipid lowering medication. But, uh, however, in older people, uh, this uh, intensive treatment, uh, the benefit of this in intensive treatment may be uh, not that uh, relevant because of their condition, because they will get uh, another adverse events because of the, the intensive treatment like uh, hypoglycemia, hypotension, uh, and etc. But uh, if we see from the guideline sites, the guidelines of diabetes treatment already shifted from the uh, more personalized uh, approach that the treatment goal should be more uh, individuals based on individuals' uh, characteristic and preference. So uh, these can result in less intensive treatment, uh, especially for the older and frail people or for the people that who may not need that intensive treatment. So then we want to see how uh, the rates of uh, the deprescribing, how the success uh, from the deprescribing implementation and what is the, term, the, the determinants that can influence the success or uh, the, the, term, the, the deprescribing process. So uh, the rates, first, uh, if you see here from the, the table that the rates of uh, uh, prescribings uh, in older adults in the controlled uh, glucose uh, level, 6.5% uh, of HbA1c, the rates, uh, it's still low. It's below 50% so, but we, we expected more, uh, more 
yeah more uh, yeah, more a uh, high higher uh, rates in here because the older adults in the controlled hba1c may they may not need the intensive treatment and uh in the patient older adults in uh high hba1c eight percent the rates is six percent uh in the adults uh uh, adults with the controlled HbA1c, the rates is uh, range from 20, uh, 21 percent to 45%. And in the adults in higher HbA1c level, 7.5 percent, the rates is around 19 to 31 uh, percent. How about the uh, SBP or systolic blood pressure? Also the the range uh, the rates, of uh, this deprescribing is not that high. Uh, and then uh, these rates uh, was marginally influenced by comorbidity or uh, frailty, but uh, it, the rates were, were not much affected by age, gender, and also uh, life expectancy. And then the success, if we see the how the deprescribing implementation can su successfully uh, done in the uh, clinical practice, uh, there are several studies that examine about the success. So actually the deprescribing of glucose lowering medication successfully conducted in 62% to 75% of uh, patients with the small rises of HbA1c. So it seemed possible to do that deprescribing and the patient still have the stable uh, condition. Uh, and then, but uh, yeah, those study also we, not a large scale study, uh, unfortunately, but then we, we still see there's a possibility to do this deprescribing for uh, patients. And then the determinants. So in the determinants, we see how the healthcare professional and also the patient regarding the deprescribing process. But unfortunately, we did not find any studies about the uh, patients um, uh, contribution or whether it can influence the deprescribing, but there are some statistics studies about the determinants uh, that say uh, about healthcare professional opinion about the prescribing. They said they have a dif different opinion when they want to conduct the prescribing. They have the different standard when they ha want to uh, do the deprescribing, whether the, it depends on the patient condition or depends on the situation as well. But in general, the healthcare professional have uh, the, uh, accepted the concept of the, the deep prescribing itself, but they still need uh, additional support and guidance when they want to implement this uh, deep prescribing since there are no explicit guideline to uh, help them uh, uh, implement the deep prescribing. And then other determinants uh, that can influence the prescribing is uh, we see that if there is a reminder system uh, from uh, the in the clinical practice, it can increase the deprescribing occurrence. So the healthcare professional have more awareness uh, about the deprescribing about the patient condition when they 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 uh, there there was there were set uh, a reminder system of that. And then uh, in this reminder system, they can identify potentially overtreated over older people. And also uh, it can lead uh, to less overtreatment and also less hypoglycemic events because of this intensive treatment. And for all of this uh, scoping review, we found no uh, studies that reveal about the lipid lowering medication, uh, the deprescribing of the lipid lowering medication in people with diabetes, only the glucose lowering medication in hypertension. Yeah, unfortunately, these uh, studies about the deprescribing in type 2 diabetes uh, are still limited. And but uh, we can conclude that uh, in the clinical practice or in this. Uh, uh, this now in the current situation, the prescribing implementation in practice appears to be a challenging and 
those uh, the deprescribing process most focus on the people that uh, experiencing uh, drug related problems but not from the patient that already in the co uh, uh, controlled uh, health uh, the, the control health uh, condition so it should be more uh, we should pay more attention to the patient that may need not uh, may may don't need the intensive treatment so they can uh, have the uh, examination to get the deprescribing uh, for uh, their treatment and indeed at the end of uh, the day the deprescribing process is uh, aimed to improve the patient outcomes that the patient will have a better uh, treatment with less adverse events but also with the uh, yeah better outcomes for their health um, that's all that I can share uh, today. If you have any question or you want to uh, uh, share some ideas about this, uh, don't afraid to uh, contact me and just let me know. Thank you very much.